Hi, I'm Michael Burke, and this is Money Talks. Hi, I'm Michael Burke and we are with Ray Steibach, owner and founder of Route 20 Outhouse at Route 20 Outhouse. Yep. And today we're going to be talking about two, two things mainly. One is the new venture that you've got in the works and a new restaurant specifically right down the road. And we'll also be talking about how you and your team and your business are, are bringing back Crowdfest this year in a much bigger and better way than it ever was in the uh, days that some people that are watching may remember. Um, so let's review, last time we did a show here, it was about two years ago, and you were still partly under construction. About 20 outhouse, you're right along Highway 20, you jump on the front end, road south, and then you make a turn right, and then you come into the parking lot. Um, what is Route 20 Outhouse? How do you describe it to people who are across the country or something? Um, I would say Route 20 Outhouse is, um, well first we're a bar restaurant. Mm -hmm. I think a, a big thing is the entertainment, obviously mm -hmm. at the stage. Um, we bring in a lot of national acts in, uh, probably more national acts than Racine County has ever seen or has ever been here. So. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, pretty exciting, I would say. And you have a very sophisticated, I, I remember from last time I was here, very sophisticated sound control system. Yes. Um, yeah, so yeah. you get good results from that. Oh, yeah. Well, let's turn right to the, the next project on the books for you, which is you're taking former Captain's Cove, literally right down the road on the frontage road just south of here, and you are making it into Route 20 uh, Chicken and Waffles. Yep. Why did you want to open a restaurant like that? Um... <laughs> well, actually, I was, I've always the vision, you know, expanding and having other restaurants. Um, the opportunity presented itself a little earlier than we had uh, were thinking, but um, based on our needs here and how things have evolved uh, in our three years here, um, we found it a need, and sometimes we have national acts on a Friday or Saturday night um, that is cut into, or any other night for that matter. Um, that our regular people that are here to visit the, the bar and restaurant um, sometimes are kind of shuffled out because of the, mm -hmm. the, the music and that so they can't come and enjoy the meal like they wanted to without mm -hmm. the interruption of the, of the sound. Okay. Sometimes it could be too loud for them, maybe it's not the genre of music that they like. Mm -hmm. um, so it can steal from that dinner business. Correct. And then that would actually shuffle down the street or somewhere else. So when this came up, I was like, you know, what a great opportunity to uh, evolve a little more than what we are and then kind of have a, an auxiliary or a backup place to go when we have some big entertainment coming that mm -hmm. you know not let's be honest not everybody you know likes live music and not mm -hmm. everybody you know everybody's got a different mm -hmm. uh, genre they like so it, I think it works out great and then I want to kind of tackle some things that we don't do here um, mainly we don't do breakfast mm -hmm. um, and we don't do fried chicken so Oh. A couple things to kind of target that you know this area needs. Yeah, um, it's it's growing. It's going to be developing. I'm sure you guys have had in the paper mm -hmm. things that are going to be going on in the expansions. I think Toyota's coming out here. Yep. A couple other mm -hmm. manufacturers. So uh, we just thought that was kind of the right opportunity to do something that we could actually uh, complement each other versus having somebody come in with just another bar and restaurant and be a competitor. I thought it'd be more yeah. of a partnership mm -hmm. that we work well together. That way, I'm not competing against myself or somebody else. Right. And we can kind of complement each other and kind of help each venue can help each other out. And the proximity is is just something else. You you were mentioning to me that at the moment your plan is to have your present kitchen manager also take over the kitchen there. Correct. And I and how far apart are the two places? Uh, it takes us about 30 seconds with a four wheeler. If that, um, but we, we plan on getting a couple golf carts. We can just shoot across the field. So oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, that'll be fun. So it'll be, it'll actually be neat, you know. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, when do you plan to open that one? And uh, what? How many hours a day do you plan for that to be open? Because I'm sure you're going to tend to draw business off the interstate. A lot of travelers, maybe early morning truckers, or you know, late nights. So. We're gonna, yeah. You know, the big thing is, you know, a lot of traveling off the. Obviously, we got I-94 here. 
um, a lot of truckers, um, a lot of people traveling. Uh, the bus pickup and shuttle is here for the airport and stuff too for both O'Hare and Milwaukee. Oh. Um, so we're going to open up at 5 a.m. That's a good breakfast time, catch a lot of people that may not just want to get quick fast food that want mm -hmm. a nice uh, breakfast. Um, and we'll probably stay up until bar close time. So mm -hmm. in essence, it could almost be 24 hours, but not quite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when do you plan to open it? We're hoping to be open sometime in May. Mm -hmm. It's going to take a little bit, but that's May 2015 sure. for those yeah. who may see this show later. Correct. It, you, it may be already open by that time. Um, you have a, back to Route 20 outhouse itself for a second. You have one main project going on this year. Why don't you mention that? We actually have two. Oh, two. Um, two. The first one is uh, out on our patio. We finally got the patio done uh, beginning last year. Uh, we're putting a band pavilion out because this summer we're going to have bands on the weekends. Just playing out there, just you know, a couple guys, acoustical, just some nice little live music out there for people to enjoy during the summer, which you know, a lot of we get a lot of motorcyclists, a lot of travelers. People want to sit outside when it's nice. So. Well, will that be completely weather dependent, or is there going to be seating under roof for those who are listening? Um, well, it'll probably be completely weather dependent. Okay. Um, if you know, worst comes worst, if it is stormy, we got bands set up, then we'll just bring it inside. Mm -hmm. But we'll still have it on the weekends. And then the other big project is we purchased uh, land behind us uh, that we're developing into a parking lot this spring because we need additional parking because we just don't, the, our capacity, um, our, the, the parking does not support our capacity and when we have big band nights, people are parking down the road on all the front and, and some of our neighbor uh, businesses here, we just can't have that. Because will that support the, the future restaurant too? Uh, down the road eventually it will too, yeah. Okay, okay. In the scheme of things, I got a long term plan. Because I was thinking about truckers, how would they actually be able to park in the lot of what was Captain's Cove and what will be Route 20 Chicken and Waffles? And actually, they would they would stay over uh, parked in the truck parking, and then they would just walk. It's close over. enough to they, walk. It's close enough. They just walk across the street. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Well, your other big project, in addition to everything we've talked about so far, is going to be uh, bringing the Crowd Fest back this year uh, in 2015. Crowd Fest had been closed for about, um, what was it, a dozen years or something It's been like about that? 12 years, yeah, it's been. You know what, there's going to be an awful lot to talk about with that. Um, we'll just scrape the surface and then I think we'll, we'll delve into it just a little bit more in, um, in part two of this conversation. But basically you're talking about a four day, 40 band or something like that yeah. event, major midway, huge, lots of restaurants. And um, I think maybe we'll just uh, wet people's appetites by um, leaving it there. Okay. And why don't we talk about that in part two? Sounds good. You'll hear a lot more about race Divex plans in part two of Money Talks. Um, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Michael Burke. Behind the camera is Greg Shaver. Please join us for part two next week to hear about the bigger and better Crowdfest to come in 2015. Thanks to this guy.